forgot something. Play more. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. This is our time for announcements, and I see some people sitting up here all ready to go. So let's call on Mary Maples first. I kind of like this. I know what you mean when you're up high. Uh, Every time I get up here, you know what I'm going to talk about, bread. Uh, and goodies. We have no one signed up for uh, August to pick up the goodies at Publix at 10 o'clock on Saturday night. We uh, have no goodies if somebody doesn't sign up to pick it up. Uh, We do have a sign up to take them to um, wherever it is we're taking them right now. It's changed for the summer and I'm not sure. Uh, But anyway, in August we need someone to sign up to pick up the goodies 10 o'clock at Saturday night at the public's out on 41. You'll do it. Thank you very much. Well, that was easy. All right. Norma. Hopefully you can all see this. Good morning, everybody. Um, Women's Fellowship gathered on Wednesday, and we went through some special things that we're going to develop um, in October. You'll be hearing a lot more about it, but in October we're going to have an auction. This was given to me by my grandmother when she got married. Plus late 1800s, I believe, because my aunt is 98, and she's the youngest, so it's got to be 1800s. There's no date on it or anything, but I'm donating it to the church. This is one of Dolly Besser's collector's dolls, just one of. She's got some that are sitting in chairs, some that are whoops, some that are in carriages, um, a little um, high chair, and this is going to be Ruthie's donation to the church. There's between 15 and 20 of them. All of them were at least $200. So again, we're going to auction them off. Now, what do I need from everybody else? Because we can't have an auction with 20, 25 items. We need lots of things. We don't want rummage sale things. We want you to go home and look in your closets and see what you have, antique or something that's very precious. And men, how about that piece of um, saw that you have only used twice and it sets in your garage? Those things are all valuable. And that's what we need for this auction. We're going to have really a wonderful event. You will be hearing a lot about it. Also, we already sold one item. Mine. <laughs> I had a one of those air conditioners that you can move from room to room. And you just put the exhaust out the window. And it cost $300 at Lowell's, if anybody questions it. And I sold it. I was going to save it for the auction. And we were playing cards one evening, and they wanted to buy it. And I says, well, okay. I felt kind of bad trying to sell them something because they're my friends. Oh, no, it's going to the church. Make a, make a number, I'll pay for it. And I said, okay, how about $125? Well, 
So we were already half, we're already on a go with $125. That's our seed money. And also, that ends women's fellowship. Oh no, oh no, there's more. We all believe and really want to concentrate on raising money for this church. We have decided that charity begins at home. We donate 840 some dollars to all of our missions, outreach program, ECHO, uh, special time, etc. We are going to still continue to give them money, but they're not going to get the checks that they usually get from us. We are down it. We are going to give to the ministry fund $500. We will continue to give the way we always do to our vacation, our um, Sunday school children at Christmas and, and our um, homeless event and the other things that we pay for that are involving the church. But $500 is going to go to the minister's fund. And another little, okay, that ends Women's Fellowship. Now, I have to tell you, we have a surprise coming in October. This two weeks, right, Sandra? Two weeks? Yes, August 4th, right? That's about two weeks away. Her grandson is coming. Were you here the last time he played the piano for us? Oh, he is awesome. He is going to college. He's finished two years. He's still got two more years to go. And let me tell you, you don't want to miss this event. So tell your friends, make sure they come two weeks, August 4th. Thank you. Nothing? Oh, I thought you were sitting up for an announcement. Okay. Any other... Any other announcements? All right. Let me welcome you to the Northport Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you haven't already started the friendship pads, there's a friendship pad on the end of the pew towards the center aisle. We ask you to open that and to sign your name to it. Uh, pass it along till it goes to everyone in the pew. When it gets to the last person, please pass it back where it came from and look and see who else is sitting with you. And if you're a first-time visitor, we have something for you. Do we have any first-time visitors here this morning? Right back here from our vacation Bible school. All right. And down here, all right. Oh, and over here. And one over here. Just a little something to say we appreciate that you're here this morning and the popcorn is in there because we're saying that we hope you'll pop back in. If you have a cell phone, we ask that you either turn it off or put it on the silent mode and I'm going to be talking about cell phones with the children this morning. Uh, please see the special insert for the lunch that is next Sunday following worship and fill out the bottom and place it in the offering plate to let us know that you will be coming. Uh, if you haven't already gotten the word, Al Miller died this past week, and the memorial service will be tomorrow here at 11 o'clock in the morning. And ending on a really nice note, you'll... Uh, Mark and Heather Wunchel are celebrating their 10th wedding anniversary with us this morning, and they are going to renew their vows. And because Mark and Heather 
and the family are such an integral part of this church, I decided we're not going to have it after the worship service and have you all stay. We're going to have it during our celebrations this morning so that we can all really celebrate with them as they do this renewal. And that concludes our announcements. Let us be in worship. Christ is in us. Christ is the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and throughout generations, but has now been revealed to us. Let us proclaim this mystery, the hope of glory, as the disciples of Christ. I invite you to join in singing our hymn that we sang last week.
Please join me in the litany of approach and praise. The Spirit of God calls us, calls to us. The Spirit of God calls to us. Calling us to be more than we are now. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. Please be seated. The gospel reading today is Luke ten thirty-eight through forty-two. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened at what to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part which will not be taken away from her. What? That it? <laughs> Let's come on down here, Daniel, with the other other kids. Then you can come back up here. I want to have all the kids come and join me down here in the front pew, please. You did a good job. So good to have you girls here today. How are you this morning? Just a minute. Wow. Four messages. Four messages. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh my gosh, is that ever interesting? Wow. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, you're here. <laughs> you ever see that happen with anybody before? Yeah. Yeah. You ever do it? Yeah. This is a smartphone. It's too smart for me. <laughs> Interesting thing. It used to be that we used phones to make phone calls. Then they came out with a smartphone where you can do all kinds of things with them, and we've almost forgotten that they can also be used for phone calls. There I was reading that one out of every four adults today now has a cell phone. Most of them are now smartphones. One out of every ten children over the age of six has a cell phone. Good. Oh, I don't want to get into that, but it's probably good. These have become so important, I guess, to people that they spend a whole lot of time on them. In fact, and maybe you've seen this, 
a whole family will come into a restaurant. They'll sit down at the table, and they'll all take out their smartphones, and they'll all be doing something with it, and they'll never talk to each other. Any of you ever seen that? Yeah. Yeah. The danger is that they're going to forget how to talk to each other. They get, and the word is distracted. They get distracted from what's going on right around them. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) By their smartphone. And that's too bad, because it means that people miss out on what's actually happening right there. And people are missing out on conversations with people who are right there. (laughs) Really? Yeah, yeah, okay. My, my, My grandkids, when they come down here from up north, they used to come and we would get into conversations and I would get to tell them my jokes, and they would laugh whether they were funny or not. Now the grandkids come with their iPhones, their iPads, and their mother comes with the same thing, and they all get involved in playing with them. And we don't have conversations anymore. They're all sitting there working their fingers on this little screen and they get distracted. Well, our Bible story this morning that Daniel just read and read it so well was about Jesus going to the home of Martha. And it tells us that Martha, even though she didn't have a smartphone, Martha got distracted by the work that she was doing in getting ready for Jesus, and she was out in the kitchen and wasn't paying any attention to him. And her sister Mary was in with Jesus, talking with Jesus and in conversation. And Martha hollers in from the kitchen, Jesus, tell her to come out and help me in the kitchen. You ever heard that kind of thing? Yeah, and Jesus said, Martha, don't, be, get, don't get so distracted by what you're doing out there. Mary is involved out here in conversation. Come and be a part of the conversation. Sometimes we can get so caught up in activity that we get distracted from what's going on right with us, with other people. And it's important that we be involved with other people that are right there with us. And more importantly even than that, it's important that we not be distracted by church work and not listen to Jesus and what Jesus has to say to us. That's our lesson for this morning. I'm going to give you your bulletins with the games and things in them, and we're going to have a little prayer. Let's pray. God, we thank you for sending us Jesus, but help us not to get so distracted that we don't hear him and don't listen to what he has to tell us, that we need to be involved with the people who are with us, that we can show love here and now where we are. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can go back and sit down, and Daniel, you can go back to work.
The Old Testament reading is Psalms 15. O Lord, may who may abide in your tent, who may dwell on your holy hill, those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander who do with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, or in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath, who even in their to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest, and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. Our theme this morning is hospitality. It's a Christian virtue. What does it mean to be hospitable? What does it mean to be welcoming? Last week I told you about driving my car a long stretch out in Colorado in my first church. I want to tell you another little quick story about my first church when I was in Colorado. Uh, calling on people has always been an important thing to me in my ministry, as many of you know, when I went around and called on people and got acquainted. Um, when I was in this church in Colorado, I did the same thing. And after I was there for oh, maybe three weeks, uh, I got a list of the people in the churches that were there, and I began to make calls on the people. Uh, back then, it was easier to get a hold of people, so I didn't call ahead of time and make appointments. I would just do what's called drop-in calls. And I went up to this one house and knocked on the screen door standing on the porch and waited for a few seconds, I guess. And then a woman came to the door holding a broom. And she looked at me, and she said, yes. And I said, hi, uh, I'm uh, Joe, and uh, I'm uh, the interim, or not interim, I'm the intern uh, minister at the church. She opened up the door, and she says, I know who you are, took out the broom and says, get off my porch. I got off very quickly and thought, that wasn't very welcoming, was it? In another church, uh, where again, I was making the get acquainted calls, and I was making appointments, just as I did here. And I went to this one house. Uh, There was a painter's truck, you know, a van, also in the driveway. Uh, obviously, the people were having some work done on their house. And uh, the woman came, and it was summer. And so I was dressed, you know, in slacks and uh, a, a sport shirt. A uh, woman came to the door, and she says, come in, come in. And I well, this is a nice welcome. And she said, come in, she says. And she had me follow her, and I sat in the den. It was a very nice house. And I smelt these wonderful aromas coming from the kitchen. And it was like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It was my first call of the day. And I thought, did she not understand that I don't eat anything when I make these calls? Is she fixing me lunch? 
And I mean, the aromas were good. And uh, so I thought, maybe she didn't understand, and maybe that's good <laughs> that, that she didn't understand. I, I could really luck out on this. I sat there for a long time. Uh, it was easily a half an hour. And I'm, you know, getting all these nice aromas. Mary and Martha came to mind. I kid you not. I thought, maybe this is a Martha type that is so caught up in her fixing something good for me to eat that she, you know, isn't going to come out and visit with me until she's all ready to serve. She came out, and she looked at me startled, and she said, oh, you're still here. <laughs> okay, yeah. And she says, well, what did you think? And I says, uh, ex excuse me, but uh, what do you mean, what did I think? Then she looks at me intently, and she says, you came to give me an estimate on redecorating this room, right? <laughs> and, I, and I said, uh, excuse me, but I'm the new minister at the church. He goes, oh my, she says, yes, I forgot all about that. <laughs> so there was a different kind of welcome. Those delicious aromas were not for me. <laughs> Getting ready for something else. And, but it was confusion over who I was. But uh, so whenever I'm making calls on people these days, both of those come back to my mind. Both could happen. I could still be met by somebody who says, what are you doing here? Get off my porch. Or somebody who's gotten me confused with somebody else. Our Bible story this morning is about Martha and her sister Mary. I don't want to get into that game of comparing Martha, the distracted one, with Mary, who paid attention to Jesus. If you heard the scripture or read it, you know that it says Jesus went to the home of Martha, who had a sister whose name was Mary. This was not Martha's and Mary's home. So obviously, it falls to Martha to be the good hostess and to see that there's something there to offer the guest. But it appears from the way the story is told that Martha is the busy one. Preachers love those people who are the busy ones. We love to be able to see the people in churches who you ask them if they'll do something and their hand just shoots up. You know, yeah, they'll do it. Uh, they almost can't find enough things to do. But preachers also love the ones who come just to listen, who hang on our every word. What did he say? What did the wise one say this time? You know. Both were important in being hospitable and welcoming to Jesus. If Martha wasn't busy in the kitchen, Jesus was not going to get anything to eat. And I think Jesus would have been disappointed, at least, if he hadn't gone and gotten something to eat. Because we know from the rest of the Bible stories, Jesus loved to eat. Mary was important that she came to listen. Both are important. A minister was preaching on this text one time and was making the comparison. And after the worship service, a woman came out of the church and said to the minister, both women 
were risking. Both women were taking a chance. You men may not understand, but when a single woman or women allow a man to come into their house, they're taking a chance. And I never thought about that. And I think about all the calls, the pastoral calls that I have made over the years. And a lot of them, as I said, were just what we call cold calls, you know, the drop-in calls. Uh, people who would visit the church, and then I would go out and call on them. They'd only seen me once, and that was, you know, during the worship service. And there's a lot of other people to see, too. And I would just assume that I would be welcomed in their home. And I never thought about especially in this day and age, the chance, you know, the risk that's involved in somebody allowing a stranger to come into their home. Just recently when I was making some calls, uh, a woman answered her door with the chain in the door. And it wasn't until I made myself known as to who I was that she became real friendly and opened it up. And I fully understood that. When we entertain and allow people to come and visit us, there's risk involved. Even if we know them, there's risk involved. Change is going to take place when we welcome people into our homes and into our lives. But that's what hospitality is about, is to take the risk of allowing people in. Now, this church prides itself in its friendliness. Is this a hospitable What do you think? This is a hospitable church. What do you mean by that? Tell me. What's it mean to be hospitable? Welcoming? Okay. How is it welcoming? Open up the door and let anybody come in. Yes. Yes. We'll let anybody come in. And then what? We show them where to sit, and then we sit with them. Hmm. Really? Okay. Well, let's back this up for a minute. Hospitality. When you entertain in your home, let's say you're going to have an open house. What do you do? Clean. 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 Would you all agree with that? Yeah. So you want to have a clean place, you know, open house, you're going to have a clean place. Okay. This church entryway out there, which is the first thing people come into, is clean, neat. Okay. Not really necessary to do that. Uh huh. <laughs> if if it's not a pigsty, Ruth said. <laughs> okay. Then after people come in, huh, you're having an open house. Then what happens? What's that? Got to feed them. Okay, you got to have something for them to eat, at least nibble on. Uh, that, so what do we do in the church making out? How do we feed them? What's that? Okay, but they have to get through this first. 
What's that? Okay. Ah, okay. So there is some sort of feeding that takes place here. Okay. Hmm? And the music. Yeah. So there's sort of a feeding that takes place. Okay, with the words and the music and, and, and so on. Uh, then what do we do? Anything else to help people feel really at home? Hmm? Shake their hands and make them feel welcome. Okay. I want you to remember all that because that's something that we need to continually work on is making sure that we are welcoming and hospitable and knowing that there are some risks involved because when we really welcome people, it's not just here once, we hope, but we welcome them into our family to become part of us. And as we all know, who have welcomed new people into our families through marriage and births, things change, don't they? The family changes. It changes us. And to be really welcoming is to be open to being changed. We in the United Church of Christ talk about our extravagant welcome. We are the church of the extravagant welcome. There were two men who were hearing a UCC preacher preach one Sunday on the extravagant welcome of the church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And they came up to the minister afterwards and they said, one of them said, I wish my sister could have been here to hear that sermon. And then they told her this story. They said that they lived in New York. They went all the way up to Maine to visit this man, one man's sister, to introduce her to his partner, which was the other man, because he wanted her to know how happy he was in this relationship. The sister met them at the front door and he started to say, whatever the sister's name was, I want you to meet my part. And he got that far and the sister said, this is a Christian home and we don't want that type here. And sent them back on their way. That is not welcoming, and that is not hospitality. I don't think Jesus would have met them that way. I don't think that's how Jesus would have greeted those two people. To be a church of extravagant welcome and extravagant hospitality means to welcome everyone. And the question for us as a church is, are we really willing to risk welcoming everyone? If a homeless person were to come, would the welcome, would the homeless person be given an extravagant welcome? Would a person who comes somewhat mentally confused and, 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 and you know, showing that they're just not quite the same as the normal person, would they be given an extravagant welcome? Today, right now, 
we are being reminded that our country has a great ways to go to really be hospitable and welcoming of one another regardless of who we are, regardless of race. Race relations has come to the fore again because we still are a people who live in fear of one another because of appearances. No young person should have to be afraid to go into any community in this country because of the way they look. This church is a church to model the opposite, to model not fear, but love. The church of extravagant welcome. Can we risk, really, being what we say we are, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey? You really are welcome here. Let us pray. Our merciful and gracious God, we are so thankful that you are hospitable and welcoming to us. Through Jesus, you have extended to us the extravagant welcome into grace. Be with us as we also would extend that welcome to everyone. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Let's join in our hymn. as I said during the early part, our celebration today begins with a celebration of Heather and Mark's 10 years of marriage, and they are going to renew their vows with us this morning. And so I invite the wedding party to come forward. You up for this? You got the rings. All right.
Heather and Mark have expressed an interest and a desire to renew their marriage vows and wish to do so in the sight of God and the family of God so dear to them. This is a unique opportunity for us as members of one another to affirm this marriage and to offer our continued support as they grow as husband and wife and his family. Mark and Heather, you were married on July 19th, 2003. So you've been married for 10 years. God has blessed you with children. And by coming here today, you are saying you want your marriage to be open to God's will and that you want to be supported by the body of Christ. You want God to be present in all of your actions. You have learned in your marriage not to expect perfection in each other, I assume, (laughs) but to expect forgiveness. You have learned to give each other respect and to live honestly with each other in mutual love and affection. I would imagine you have learned a lot in 10 years. And the learning continues. But so does the living and likewise the loving. You have found that in a true marriage, one is incomplete without the other. The two of you, although individually distinct, form a union that is sacramentally and mystically indivisible. You have your own identities and personalities, but together your marriage has taken on an identity and personality as well. Out of your sense of completeness, you come today to renew your vows to make stronger that which is already a source of strength for you. Mark, do you renew your pledge to share your life openly with Heather, to speak the truth to her in love? Do you renew your promise to honor and tenderly care for her? to cherish and encourage her own fulfillment as an individual through all the changes of your lives, do you make this solemn pledge before God? If so, answer, I do. do. Heather, do you renew your pledge to share your life openly with Mark, to speak the truth to him in love? Do you renew your promise to honor and tenderly care for him to cherish and encourage his own fulfillment as an individual through all the changes of your lives. Do you make this your, this your solemn pledge before God? If so, answer, I do. Do you, as the body of Christ and his friends of Heather and Mark, promise to support them as they renew their marriage covenant? Do you affirm them in their desire to manifest Christ in their marriage? Do you pledge to uphold their marriage by affirming their strengths and encouraging them in their weaknesses? Do you pledge your love, honor, respect, and support? If so, will you please respond by saying, we do with the help of God. God. Daniel, will you hand me the rings? For 10 years, these rings have been a visible reminder of an invisible and inward grace that unites two hearts in love. The circle of the rings symbolizes the unending and enduring quality of the love which Mark and Heather pledged to each other July 19th of 2003. The rings have become over the years a symbol for their constancy of their love for each other. Today, as they give these rings once again, they renew the spirit of love in which these rings were given. Heather, take, the, take Mark's ring. Place it on the fourth finger of his left hand and say to him, Mark, Mark. this ring is still a sign of my love and faithfulness. taking Heather's ring, placing it on the fourth finger of her left hand, say, Heather, Heather, this ring is still a sign of my love and faithfulness. This ring is still a sign of my love and faithfulness. 
Heather and Mark, along with all the members of this congregation, I applaud your desire to keep your commitment and your love fresh and meaningful. I support your desire to walk within the will of God as you know and understand it. I am pleased to recognize your marriage and to bless this renewal of your marriage vows. May you in turn continue to find your marriage a source of strength, encouragement, comfort, and companionship until you are gathered with those who have gone on before us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may kiss the bride and the husband. And be seated. What a wonderful way of affirming hospitality and welcoming. All of that is important in a marriage and in the family. What do you celebrate today? Dave. I celebrate that um, our neighbors and, and friends, um, Jill and Gloria Sternberger, have brought their, or her, Gloria's granddaughter and grandson in law. Good to have you here. Where are you folks from? Portland, Indiana. Indiana. Okay. We've got some other Indiana folks here in this room. Yeah. Any other celebrations? Okay. Concerns that you want to share with us this morning? Enid. I celebrate my my friend, uh, Rachel, come down from New York to visit me for a week. From New York? Okay. Nice to have you here. It was hot up in New York recently. Were you there for that? Yeah, you had to come to Florida to get cool. Yeah. (laughs) Unusual, but that's the way it was. Is <laughs> any anything else? Concerns, celebrations. Mark. Mark. I just that I want to hope that we take care of Dee Miller because she's going to be uh, yes. Yeah. Tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Our concerns certainly, and our prayers do go with Dee. Norma. Okay, very good. Nicole? I would just like us to keep all of our prayers for those that are struggling with cancer right now. I know I have a few close and dear and dear friends that are struggling with cancer, not only in themselves, but I have also a good friend that has found out that her three-month-old has cancer and died. Yeah, uh uh-huh. Okay, so anyone that is struggling with cancer, hold them in our prayers. Yes. All right. Hi. Yep. What's that? Keep Mr. Ralph in our prayers. Keep Mr. Ralph. Oh, keep yes, yes. Ralph Rooney. We want to keep Ralph Rooney in our prayers. And I also want us to keep our nation in our prayers. As I said during the sermon, uh, this, uh, the Trayvon Martin Zimmerman trial is tearing at our fabric uh, of this country and pulling people in so many different ways. And we are reminded again of our need for improved relations and relationships amongst all people. Let us be in prayer. Dear God, we do come to you as a people, first of all, filled with gratitude. We celebrate with Mark and Heather and the family the renewal of their marriage vows. It's a wonderful way to express their continued commitment to each other and their love and their growth. 
We thank you for friends and families that are important to us and that all help us to grow. And we thank you for this church, which continues to seek to be a church of extravagant welcome. Our prayers do go out to the people who are suffering in so many ways, people who suffer from cancer. Be with Dee Miller and her family as they grieve the death of Al. Help us all to work to reconcile all people and to help us be the welcoming people of Jesus Christ. Hear us now as we pray to you the silent prayers of our hearts. And let us join our voices as the family of God in our unison prayer. Almighty God, holy and true, we offer up thanksgiving and praise because you love all humanity. Creator whose workings are made known in Jesus, hear our prayer of gratitude offered humbly this day. Make clear your will for our lives so that we might serve you always according to your will. Amen. Let us present our gifts and tithes at this time. Almighty God, we come before you privileged to share in your great work of reconciling all of creation to you through your gifts that we share today. Receive these offerings in the spirit in which they are given. Inspire us with the vision of the great work you intend to do. Bless us daily to give more and to give more joyfully. This we pray in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen.
our service of being hospitable and welcoming continues, go and be the reconciling factors in this community and in the world. Amen.